In the Tian Shan Mountains of Kazakhstan in Central Asia, apple trees grow in the wild. These native apple trees have been thriving here for thousands of years. In ancient times, they provided food for nomadic tribes, for bears and for birds. And while empires in this region would rise and fall, these wild apple trees, today classified as Malus seversii, survived. As it turns out, the Malus seversii apple trees from Kazakhstan are the ancestors of all the apples that we buy in our shops today. Now, how did that happen? Well, over a thousand years ago, travelers and traders enjoyed the fruit and brought the seeds back home with them, hoping to plant these apple trees in their communities. The seeds went from Asia to Europe, and in Europe, these trees were hybridized with native crab apple trees. Those native crab apples were called Malus sylvestris, and they were also hybridized with other species over the years. So pretty much all of the apples we find in our shops and supermarkets today are the descendants of this mix of species. So we know that Malus seversii originated in Kazakhstan. And we know that Malus sylvestris was native to Europe. But what about North America? Do we have native apple trees too? The answer is yes. And that is what we are going to talk about on the show today. So now, welcome, Paul Crone, to the show today. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Susan. Uh, thanks for inviting me. So I'm excited to hear how you describe the difference between, like, what, what is a native apple tree? How is it different from domesticated apple trees or even wild or feral apple trees? So the apple tree you've just described coming out of Asia with the uh, Mouse Cerversii, as its ancestor, so what we now call Malus domestica. It's the domestic apple we're all familiar with. Um, we grow them obviously in orchards and our yards and that, and it's usually cultivars that we have names for like Macintosh and Northern Spy. Um, <clears throat> these trees will sometimes, uh, seeds from these trees will escape into the wild and start growing along fence rows and fields and just the edges of people's property. Um, and since they're no longer cultivated, we call them feral apples. They're basically wild apples in the sense they've escaped from cultivation. Now that's different from the native uh, crab apple, which is uh, Malus cornaria, which is an actual separate, completely separate species that's native to North America and um, grows in similar sorts of habitats as uh, the domestic apples that escape from captivity. So they tend to intermingle with them out there in the wild. If you don't spot them when they're flowering in the spring, you're not gonna spot them at all because they're, they're just small trees. Um, usually don't get more than about 15 feet tall at the most, I would say, usually less than that. And the fruit in the fall is just small little green apples um, that people might not notice either. Interesting. So we got an email here from Sylvia. Sylvia is from Toronto. She says, Hi, my name is Sylvia. I want to grow native apple trees. Thank you for your radio show today. So is that something that you, you know, do you know of a lot of homeowners and, and people who are actually trying to grow these trees themselves? Are there, you know, is it yummy fruit or what's the appeal? Um. I know that some people have said they use them for um, applesauce and cider and things like that. Um, they're very bitter, they're, they're sour and bitter. Um, so that's probably the only kind of use you'd have for them. Um, I can see how people would just want to grow them as a native tree. They have attractive flowers, for example. We've got an email here from Jessica. Jessica is from the County of Wellington, Green Legacy Program in Ontario. So Jessica wrote me when I asked her for, for some more information, and she says, the Green Legacy Program grows and distributes native trees and shrubs to residents of Wellington County. Our native crab apple is just one of about 40 to 50 species in our inventory. We're encouraging residents to plant it because of its benefits to wildlife. Many mammals consu consume the fruit and the showy pink flowers are pollinated by bees. 
This is the first year we've had it available and it was so popular that we are already sold out. For more information on the County of Wellington's Green Legacy Program, you can go to www.greenlegacy.ca. What you do is you do a lot of research around native apple trees and their reproduction. What's the big mystery? What is the thing that you encountered during your research that you guys sort of thought, what's going on here? The, the native crab apples produce a lot of different types of seed. In diploid plants, they get a they get a copy of each gene from their mother and a copy from their father. And the crab apples get two copies from their mother and two copies from their father if they're reproducing sexually. But there's three processes that go on um, in, in crab apples that really create a, a dazzling array of outcomes. Um, one is that um, they hybridize with domestic apples, as we've mentioned. So you get um, combinations of the two, and most commonly those are triploids. Um, the other thing that crab apples do is they often produce um, eggs and sperm cells that have extra sets of chromosomes. On top of that, um, they can reproduce asexually, which is a really interesting process where the flower still has to be pollinated. Um, so there's pollen coming from another flower, uh, which has the male gametes in it. And um, usually um, they are basically clones of the mother. They're genetic, genetically identical to the mother plant. So we see all these seeds of different types, but then when we test genetically test all the adult trees, uh, what we see is they're almost all tetraploids that are all genetically identical to each other within the population. So first of all, we don't know where all these hybrid seeds are going because generally they produce about 25% hybrid seeds in the population we've studied the most. Um, uh, but we don't, we've only found one adult hybrid. And also, although they produce lots of tetraploid seeds sexually, because the whole population is genetically identical, it looks like possibly only the asexual seeds are eventually leading to adult trees. The fact that these trees are the ones that survive in the wild are mostly identical clones. Now, often when a tree is endangered, it's because there's too much mixing going on. You know, it'll be so watered down that they'll never be a native apple tree. Does this mean that these native apple trees will be with us forever? They will never be endangered because they just like to produce the exact same thing over and over again. They're always pretty much identical. The odd thing is that within a population, um, they're all identical. But then when you go to a different population, what we found so far is all the ones in that population are identical to each other as well, but it's a different genotype than the first population. Although weirdly enough, sometimes we'll be like miles and miles away and we'll find another population that has the same genotype as the first population. So there is variation within the species just not within populations.